Hi everyone, welcome back. This video is supposed to be a review for the Noctus NHD9L CPU cooler. However, I want to make um, this video something a little different to touch on Noctus SPR, Noctus Standardized Performance Rating for their CPU cooler. So this video is a little bit different. So it's a combo of two items. And before I talk more about the NSPR, let's dive into the unboxing of the Noctua NHD9L. With the overhead camera view here, I would just want to show you how tiny is this cooler. Now I'm going to open it here and look at this. It is so tiny, it's so cute. This is like, look at this compared to my rather small palm. This is small. This is tiny. Let me remove the cardboard over here. So the cardboard is just a protective piece. Not that it's any much to protect from the fan to the power heatsink itself. Very short. And this is the underside, or should I say the bottom. This is where it mounts and this is a surface shiny. So really, it's so cute. It's something that suitable for you to use in a case where there's limited space. Say a small form factor setup such as the Cooler Master NR200 which yeah really cute can't wait to test it and oh but before we head into the benchmarks I just want to highlight a few things. The fan here is the NHD9 oh by the way before we head into the benchmarks I want to talk a bit about the fan so this is the NFA9, which is a PWM fan. And you can see the mounting over here. The fan sort of covers it. So when installing, it's something that you should detach the fan first before um, going in to secure on this area. Let me get the camera to focus. Yep, to secure this area is focusing on my finger instead. Yep. To secure the screw to the mounting that is available always with the Noctua's uh, mounting system. All right, finally, uh, with that done, this single fan on the twin tower key sink, and let's have a look at the benchmarks. Okay, so in that unboxing, I said we'll go to benchmarks, but well, we'll do that later. The benchmarks will come anyway, so let's talk about the NSPR. Noctua's performance rating, the standardized performance rating for their CPU coolers is something that is really good and I think this is what makes Noctua really special because unlike any other brand, Noctua has their rating for all the CPU coolers and match against the various CPUs that are uh, available. So let's say you are you like me, you're using a Ryzen 7 7800X 3D, you can find out how it performs or as I say expected performance for when paired with the CPU coolers that are available at Noctua. Interesting, right? To use the NSPR, the easiest way to access it is from any product page. Just click on the software compatibility link. From there, you search for the CPU you are using or intended to use that is. And then it lists all the CPU cooler models from Noctua with icon indicators on the expected performance when paired with the CPU cooler. And this is where I want to add my findings. For example, the D9L I have, when, and I want to pair with the 7800X 3D. And on the website there, it says low turbo overclocking. So you might, what it means is that you cannot be getting the maximum potential out of this, uh, this CPU. Uh, not so much for the gaming, you must understand that the icon there refers to the holistic uh, performance of the CPU, meaning it's both gaming and say multi-core full-on workload, which is typically what they are referring to because gaming workload, it does not push the CPU that much. It is those multi-core workload that push it a lot. And with that, it is true when I run the 7800X 3D, using this cooler, I get some 17,000 plus point. It doesn't even touch 18,000 and yeah, if you look at the benchmarks from other people, they are, let's say, tech power up. Their score is 18,765, which is very high and it is using 
an AIO uh, liquid cooler which is 420 millimeters in length. It is the this uh, Arctic cooling uh, liquid freezer 420, liquid freezer 2 420 if I'm not mistaken, and that's a really huge color compared to this one. So yes, the rating is correct. But like what I said, the NSPR shows you what you can get out of the box, but that does not mean you cannot tune your system to perform more, to get more out of the cooler. So that's what I did. I tuned my system to the best of my ability, going through the bio settings. Now we're not going to do that for this video because that's, uh, that's going to be lengthy, I, I suppose, because there are some details over there. So I did. And guess what? Check out this benchmark here. My score is a little bit higher than the one from Tech Power Up that is using a 420mm AIO, which is the Arctic, uh, Arctic Cooling Liquid Freezer 2. That is a massive AIO compared to this tiny number of tower cooler. This tower cooler is so tiny. It's um, based on my unboxing you saw. It's really tiny compared to the AIO. And even so, the score is a little bit higher. Not so. The thing about Sydney Bench score is that, yes, it can vary from run to run. And that tiny bit of difference does not mean that I'm a huge winner on it or whatever, but it just shows you that with some tuning, you can get the pretty much the exact performance out of even a tiny cooler like this. So with that, uh, I'd say the Noctua D9L is definitely a cooler that you should look into if you're like me, regardless of price, um, you want to use it on a small form factor or narrow system and want to use tower cooler and you're not using some 79, 7950X 3D or 7950X those will be really overpowering but for certain uh, CPUs this, this tower cooler is really nice and with that I hope you understand uh, the NSPR and how you can use it and I hope you enjoyed this review of the Noctua NHD9L. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you in the next one. Do remember to subscribe to my channel if you haven't and bye bye.